Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we're here for the concurring judge table guidelines. And I'm Mary Gaines. You all know me. I've done this for years. Um, and there are some corners that I will give in addition to what we have written here today. But we'll go through them. And if you have comments or questions, you can please feel free to do to ask me. You need to move. This um, I have another copy of it because um, there it is. There. Okay. So the first one is always come to the conferring judges table ready to serve. It involves being alert, focused, and most of all, well-read concerning the study materials, which involve being an active question writer during the given quiz session. That is most important. As a conferring judge, you are required to write a quiz every week. That is, that's, that goes with the job. So, and that is due a certain time, which is for us, and it should be for everyone, I think, Saturday before the week of the question. So we are now on week three. So questions are due this afternoon before five o'clock is what they say uh, for next week's quiz. Okay. So I actually write my quizzes during the week and I, I try and have them ready to go. I could send them off early because I'm tired, but I make sure that they get there by Saturday. And if all else fails, I, I try and get it in before we have to edit them. And that's in the following week. Any questions? Yes. Sir. yes. Um, when you guys edit <clears throat> you edit through through the week, if for some reason we can't get the quiz in by five on Saturday. Um, what is the absolute deadline? I don't know that there is a deadline. We accept quizzes. <laughs> you know, I don't think we'd ever turn a quiz down. But they're turned in on Saturdays, hopefully, so that we have chance a chance to edit them. Um, so when we receive, when the questions go in, they go into the quiz master. The quiz master goes through and does edits, and then she sends them out to the edit team. And the edit team goes over them again and make their you notes know, and whatever. And so if we get them like on Monday or Tuesday, we send them back to the quiz master. The quiz master then sends them out to whomever is going to be the quiz master, you know, um, that's Sister Daniels and Domitia. So. Uh -huh. So when you all edit the quiz, when we're turning in the quizzes and you edit the quiz, do we ever know, the, the person that wrote that quiz, do we ever know what, uh, you know, what the error what was the error or whatever? Was? That's a good question. Um, and I don't know that the quiz master sends back to you to say that this is this is what we edited, mm -hmm. but that's a good point. Um, that's extra work, but um, that may be a good good way to do that. I know when I edit, when I think of, when I'm doing my edits, I know this is not conferring, mm -hmm. but when I do my edits, I always look at the page where you're telling me the reference is. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I find, that's how I know whether you did it like it was supposed to be done or not. Mm -hmm. I look at the page that you say that the uh, question came from. I start there. And then I go to my the question. I read it to see that you ask this question and this is the answer for it on that page. And a lot of times I've had to correct where your reference is. That is not where that answer came from. And that's key. Mm -hmm. But that's how we edit. But that's a good point and we could probably mention it you know, right. another session. Yes, All right, any more? No, I don't. Okay. In order to be properly prepared and equipped 
you need to bring with you at all times your study manual and your rule manual. And I have mine as on the back, I have my rule manual of my, my study, and on the front, it's the Bible quiz manual. So I have them both in the same in the same container. I just for the for the one, if we ever need the rules, we got them. And if you got you ought to always have this with you. So there, I don't want to carry a whole bunch of stuff. So in one binder, it's good. Yes. <laughs> okay. So always have that with you because we do have to refer, and we have to be there for the the quiz master. You must give your undivided attention to the quiz master and your quiz document from the time the quiz master says, this quiz is open. And once that statement is made, your pen is at the question, ready to go. Question number, and your pen goes along with every word that they are saying, just in case there is a misread, and that was uh, something that I put down at the bottom here. If there is a misread from the quiz master, you say point of order at that very moment that the error is made. You say point of order because you're following word for word. As you follow word for word, you can know she, she missed this word, point of order. That's what you say. And then sometimes the quiz master will know what they did or said. Other times they may come and ask you and then you let them know what the point of order is, okay? So you follow along word for word with your pen in hand, immediately responding, recording the response of the quizzer in the following ways. You put a check mark, you underline what the quizzer says, you notate the response of the quizzer when the quizzer has paraphrased the answer. By using this method, when feasible, is a very effective way for when the quiz master confers with you concerning what you heard from the quizzer. Um, that's why I'm saying at this point I use the two pens, mm -hmm. the different color pens, mm -hmm. so that if um, yellow one comments on that question and they get a part of it, then you got the next color pen you use for the red one that they commented. And what is very important with this, mm -hmm. when the quiz master comes to the table to you to ask, what did you hear? You wait for the quiz master to, to respond to you. They're not coming to the table for you to say. Mm -hmm. You listen to what the quiz master has to say when they come to the table. And then you can respond with, I heard this, mm -hmm. or I heard that, and you've got it written so that you will have something to base what you're saying on. Once the discussion is over at the table with the quiz master, whatever the final decision is, it's the quiz master's. And I, I put a statement here that says, once the discussion is over, it's finished. And I said that because on occasion, as a conferring judge, I have had a person who was a conferring judge with me to discuss, I heard him say da 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 I thought she said this, mm -hmm. or I thought she said that, and the question is closed. Mm -hmm. And so discussing it doesn't change anything. Right. Discussing it doesn't make it better. So that's why I made that statement when it's when the confer when the, the quiz master goes back to say correct or not correct, whatever, incorrect, it's over. It's finished. There is no need for a discussion after that. Oh, any questions? When deliberating, keep your voices very low to contain the information at the conferring table. You, it's, you do it in a whisper. And usually the quiz master will come in front, you know, with their backs to the quizzer so that they are not reading your lips <laughs> 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 or anything like that because, you know, 
they can see, they can hear. Right. So you want to be discreet with what you have to say. Okay. Um, remember, the quiz master has the final ruling during all quiz sections, and that's key. No discussion afterwards. I've had people in the audience come to me afterwards and say, I thought I heard this. That is not acceptable. You don't discuss it with anyone. It's over. And, and to do that would only, I think, cause confusion. So that's not what we're about. We're here to, to be a blessing to the Lord. And um, we're, we're here handling his word. And we want to give a good report. And that's how we give a good report by shutting things down that that's not like it should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you if you have any questions for me, I can certainly answer. Okay. Uh -huh. I can try, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one we were talking about earlier with the four part and numbers and all okay. that. Okay. So I, I, my, my issue or my, my concern is that for the, it's the tallying, I think is what you're talking yes, about. Yes, the tallying. Um, if there is a question that is um, a three-part question, okay, and a person, one of the quizzes answers one and two, and they only have one part to it, and say, question, the third answer has three parts to it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The so number one has one part, number two has one part, number three has one, two, three parts mm -hmm. in the answer. So if they answer one and two mm -hmm. and one part of number three, then each one of those count as three oh. mm -hmm. because you have three parts to that one, so you get three to the, to the number two and three to number one, if that is clear to you. So okay. three, three, and they answer one part of this, mm -hmm. then it's like actually a six. Six, yeah. It's in six. Mm -hmm. So they answered what? Three, six, seven, six. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Three parts. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It nines. Nine. That's what it is. Yeah. Nines. Mm -hmm. It's in nines. Mm -hmm. So seven nines is what they answer. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. If, if part I'm one of the questions, time, okay, if part one of the question, say the, it's a three-part question, right. and this is really not comparing to it, but this is what we do at the table. Mm -hmm. right. Right. We do this at the table <laughs> to help the quiz master sometimes. Yeah. So if they had a three-part question, and one of the answer to number one was one mm -hmm. part, number two was one part, and number three had three parts, one, two, and three, mm -hmm. in the answer, mm -hmm. and they answered one and two and one of the third one. Right. So then we know it's each one of the three, three, six, nine. So it's in ninths. Yeah. So they answered seven ninths of that question. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of just, kind of, you know, we got it on the side of our papers. And so the quiz master some, come over sometime and say, is that seven ninths? Are we dividing it in ninths? Mm -hmm. And we say yes. Now they can go to the score table. Well, they, can, they, can, they can go to the score table. Yeah. That that's there. But sometimes it's easier and quicker if we are there to give them that assistance, oh, okay. and we do that. And you know I was saying? wondering. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. You do that. Uh, the same if it, if the bottom had one, one, and two parts. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. So then it would be two, four, six. And if they answer one and two, and one part of the other one. Go ahead to four, five, six is what they answer. So it's just, you know, it's a simple math. <laughs> sometimes it's simple and sometimes it's not. I don't know, ma'am. I don't know. I'm not going to be doing this. No, forever. But not the convert, not the convert. It's my first time. It's time to score in and all. No, 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 ma'am. No, I'm like my auntie, I'm not good with that. <laughs> but converting <laughs> judge, it's a, yeah, you pick what you like. This is good. But when you're doing the questions, you're following along word for word, as they say, question number one. Yes, ma'am. And you're tuned in. 
right there. Question number one. Okay. So the quiz master says, this quiz is open. When they say this quiz is open, here you are perched. Question number one is a cross-reference question. You're going just like this, worth 20 points. Because sometimes they'll say 10, point okay. of order, point of order. Okay. That's an error. Mm -hmm. So they'll, if they catch it, they'll correct it. If they don't catch it, they'll ask you what did they say. Mm -hmm. And you can say, you said 10 points instead of 20 points. Okay. And then you say, question, and you're going just like this. What words spoken by Jesus to the woman of Samaria? And the quiz, quizzer, it's the buzzer. You put a line where they, okay. where they stopped. That's a foul. But you, it, you've got a line that dictates okay. this is where the error is. And so they'll say incorrect or that's a foul. So then you go to the next team and it's, they hit the buzz. She rereads the question. Mm -hmm. And so you go with it again. What words spoken by Jesus to the woman of Samaria prompted her to reply, Sir, I have perceived that thou art a prophet. At the end of that, you put a, a slash because that's where the question, the question stopped. The person did not interrupt, so they okay. she got to finish it. Because sometimes they'll ask you, oh, who was it that interrupted? You have written yellow one okay. or red two, whatever. You write whatever is called by the You know, the, uh, oh, the buzzer, the buzzer operator. operator. When the buzzer operator says yellow one, you write yellow okay. one. Okay. <clears throat> Whatever the, they say. And I, because I've done it a while, mm -hmm. I look to see that what they said is mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is they're showing because I have mm -hmm. seen the buzzer, the buzzer <laughs> operator. <laughs> <laughs> The buzzer operator is calling red one and it says yellow one. Right. <laughs> right. That has happened. It has happened. Mm -hmm. So you as a conferring judge, you are just to be, you know, mindful of what's okay. going on around you. And um point of order. Mm -hmm. It's yellow one instead of red one. So you pay attention so that you can be uh, so we can save questions. We don't ever want to lose a question because of something like that. Mm -hmm. Point of order. So when, and, and, and the quiz master, is she going to ask you yes. why you said point exactly. of order? Exactly. Okay. She will come she to will the order. table okay. and see what the point of order is about. Yeah. Okay. That, but that's how you interrupt. You right. can't just say, oh, that was wrong. Right. Right. Your, your communication is Strictly point right. of order. Okay. And you don't say out what it is. Right. You wait until the quiz master comes to you. Mm. And then you explain why you said point of order. And then if I remember what you said, and when the quiz master come to you, you don't just right away say, right, you right. let her say, what saying. did you hear? I say nothing until she, exactly. is that right? Exactly. When, when the quiz master comes to you, mm -hmm. you listen. And if, if you did a point of order though, they're coming over to find out what it is you, you saw or okay. what it is you heard. Mm -hmm. But if there is a, the question has been answered, you've written down what you heard the quizzer say. Mm -hmm. Now she's coming over to confer with you to see what did you hear. She will ask you that. I heard this, what did you hear? And so because you have written notes mm -hmm. to say that this person said that, then you too can confer well, she didn't hear that, but you heard this. And whatever the end result is, it will be what the quiz master says. Right. So you, you were saying that when the quizzer, uh, like he's answering the question, do you have to write everything that they no. have this night notes? Just notes that you could say okay. you, so that you know what you right. got down here. Okay. So when she asks you, you may not have to do that, but you just kind of put key stuff. Right. And sometimes they'll put parts of the answer, so I'll underline just what part of the answer mm -hmm. that they said. Okay. So that keeps you from having to write, because they'll say some pieces 
of what the answer is. Mm -hmm. So you kind of make a note, underline. If it's something off, you write just a word here or there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of how I do it. That makes sense even more to have those two different color pens. Yes, mm -hmm. they have saved my life, the, the different color pens, so that this person said that. The yellow one said this because it's in black. Mm -hmm. And red two said that because it's in red. Mm -hmm. all, all that I've written is the red. This person said that. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't have two pens, you know, but you have to figure a way that will work for you with the one color pen. Mm -hmm. Two pins. It's really worth it. Two pins. Two colors. The two colors really work for me. Right, because I didn't know what. I guess Sister Deborah signed me up for this. I know I did the, uh, the buzzer. The buzzer. Conferring judges is, uh, is an interesting assumption. But yeah, it's, it's what it's going to. It's going to cause you some work. It, I need the work. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> The work is you're going to be writing questions, mm -hmm. and um, at some point we're going to go, probably today, we'll do question writing, and that's another interesting thing. Um, <laughs> that's another one of our responsibilities as a conferring judge. We are required to, to do question writing. And so if you have no other questions, that's all we have. Thank you. Yeah.